there are lots of facets to clips and extension. And although I'm a horticulturist, I have to say that I really enjoy the 4-H programs. Um, they come up with such creative things. They're making things and they are just a lot of fun. They enjoy being with their kids and clients. Patricia Whitener is the 4 H agent in Greenville. And Patricia, y'all have found ways to stay engaged with your kids, even though we can't do in person activities. What have y'all been what have y'all been coming up with? Thank you, Amanda. It's true. 4 H agents are some of the most creative folks out there. And we have been actually our Midlands agents initially came up with a 4-H at home daily lesson activity idea when school was still in session. Um, and we it was so successful, we've just continued that right on through the summer with a whole new list of activities that kids can do right from their own home with materials that they can find in their own home. They don't have to go out to the store and buy a bunch of stuff. It's just whatever you have lying around the house. And I do wanna mention that our lesson um, for our daily 4-H at home activity today is a STEM lesson from our brand new Darlington County agent, Ms. Kyla Zimplinski. So if you're in Darlington County, you have a great young new agent that is coming up with some great activities to do at home. And today's STEM lesson that we're doing is the color changing milk. And who have you assembled for us to, um, to get to enjoy interacting with? So I'm joined today by our Newberry County 4-H agent and who her two girls, Sam and Paisley, making their Making It Grow debut. And then my very own Greenville 4-H, he's on my team. He's our vice president for our county team council in Greenville, Mr. Sarah Hare Jimenez Sanchez. Sarah Hare, thanks for helping us out today. And tell me a little bit about yourself, what, what you enjoy doing, what you like at school, what you're good at. And um and some other things that might be interesting to our to our viewers. Well, one, um, like Patricia said, I'm in Greenville County 4-H. I'm also the vice president for our county team council. And one thing that I've really enjoyed and what has 4-H made me learn more about myself is that I'm very passionate about the arts as well for science, of course. But one thing that I'm really passionate is theater specifically in the arts. I believe that you also have been selected to participate in a program that Furman University has, and it sounds like that's quite an honor as well. Yes, of course, yes. The Furman Bridges to a Better Future program, which is also founded by the Riley Institute, it's a program that I was nominated freshman year, and I'm so thankful for that program. It's similar to 4-H because it helps build students become future leaders for this new generation and also helps kids on college planning and academic success. Thank you, Sir Hare. We look forward to getting updates on your success in the future and following um, your career path. But right now, let's go back to Newberry, where Elena West and her girls are going to talk to us about today's program. Hey, everybody. It's Elena West from Newberry County. I'm here with my two girls, Samantha and Paisley, and they're gonna help us with a science experiment today. This experiment was one of the lessons from 4-H at Home back when we first were quarantined and out of school. And as Ms. Patricia said, we have continued with those lessons throughout the summer. But today's lesson is called Color Changing Milk. And I'm gonna give everybody some instructions. And as we start getting our stuff together, I'm gonna to cut it back over to Patricia to tell you a little bit about the science behind it. But first, we would need casserole dishes, just a clear casserole dish or even a clear lunch meat, you know, plastic tub. We have some dish soap. We have food coloring. We have Q-tips and we have milk. So if everyone would just get some milk, we're going to pour about, you know, a quarter of an inch, half of an inch deep in our, into our casserole dishes. And then we're going to take each of our four food colorings and put one drop of each in the center of the casserole dish, but not overlapping. So while we're doing that, Patricia, can you tell us the science behind the science experiment? Thanks, Elena. Yeah, you know me. I love to geek out on the science behind so many of our projects. And today it's all about chemistry. So we are using milk, and I think Newberry is also using local milk, just like Greenville County is using local milk from our Happy Cow farm. And as you guys know, milk is 87% water. So what today's experiment is all about how soap moves in water. So it's kind of relevant if you think about it, especially in today's COVID times, what's one of the number one things that they're telling us to do? It's wash your hands. You know, that's good advice, even when there's not a global pandemic. 
but it's especially important right now. So why does it work? Why is it so important? Well, today's color changing milk activity is going to demonstrate that. So milk, again, is 87% water. But milk also has different levels of fat contents. Now, fats are lipids. We have them in our body. Some of us have more than, <laughs> than we want. Um, and the thing about soap is it is an aggregate of molecules that form something called a micelle. And that's really unique property among molecules. So soap molecules actually have two ends. One end is very attracted to fats and greases and lipids. Now, fats and lipids are part of what make up a cell's membrane. So if you think about a virus or a germ or bacteria, they have cells that are encapsulated by membranes that are made up of fats. So when you wash your hands with soap, part of that end of the soap molecule is attracted to those lipids and those fats and actually will break them down. Now the other end of the soap molecule is something called hydrophilic. Well, let's break that word down. Hydro means water, philic means attracted to. Now if it was hydrophobic, it would be hydro water phobic fearful of. But these are hydrophilic, so that means soap is soluble in water. So as you wash your hands, you're going to be able to actually break down and destroy virus, bacteria, and germs by getting rid of the grease and fats around those cells. And then you're going to be able to solubilize the rest of that soap in water and have clean hands as a result. Thanks, Ms. Tricia. Is everybody ready now? All right, everybody grab a Q-tip. All right, I want you to take your Q-tip and stick it in the center of your colors in between all four of them. Anything happening? Thumbs up, thumbs down, nothing's happening? All right, I want you to take the Q-tip out. Dip the clean end of your Q-tip into your dish soap, just a little dab. And then I want you to take your Q-tip and dip it back in to the center and watch what happens. <gasps> what happens? Thumbs up, thumbs down, something crazy happening over here? In the color. Make sure you're putting it in the color. Your dish soap end of the Q-tip should be in the color. Anything happen? Over here in Newberry, we've got some tie-dyed milk going on. Things are spinning. Um, the colors are going every which way. And of course we have uh, two different, you know, our colors were a little different. Also, I did not tell my girls, but one of them has full fat milk, whole milk from a local creamery, countryside creamery, and I bought it at Lever Farms over here in Newberry. And then I have some school milk um, that is low fat 1% milk. So there's a little bit of a difference in the science of ours um, than what, you know, they're a little bit different. One of them has a little more fat to break down than the other. Would anybody else like to share what their experiment's doing with their milk and their food coloring? Um, I can share about mine. So what the food coloring did when I applied the dish soap, it spread across the whole layer of milk and it looks really fascinating. Like I could use this design or like, I, I wish I could copy it or draw it and put it like on a card and send it out as like a birthday gift or even on a shirt. It will look really nice for a design. What about you, Patricia? I agree, Sarah Hair. Mine looks like a really awesome, cool tie dye. And what was really amazing is how quickly that color dispersed across the top of that milk. I mean, it really moved. It was so fast. So as soon as that soap hit that um, color, it just shot across the surface of the milk, which was a really great example of the hydrophilic properties that we were talking about earlier. I do want to interrupt for a moment here, though, and Patricia, um, let's talk about the fact that as quickly as this happened with our milk, when we're washing our hands and really hoping to get the full benefit of having the um, micelles, the um, the part of the of the bipolar molecule that is that's repelled by water, um, searching out and going into that lipid layer. We want to take time to be certain that it has, ha that 
that the 20 seconds that we're supposed to sing happy birthday twice, we do that because it could take that long to actually penetrate that membrane. Is that correct? That's right. A lot of those bacteria and germs and viruses that we're trying to destroy, those fat membranes around those viral cells that we're trying to destroy with our soap aggregates, um, you really have got to take the time to get the tops of your hands, get in between your fingers, make sure that you are getting all of that soap spread all across the surface of your skin um, to ensure that it is doing its job in, in destroying that, that grease and those fat layers in those bacterial cells. I'd like to tie that 20 seconds of hand washing back to our experiment. Um, after your color stop moving and stop swirling, you can you know dip it again and, and, and what amazes me is how fast the colors spin it's not just like one tie-dye picture it's constantly changing because it's constantly breaking down more fat molecules it doesn't just happen once it keeps happening in our milk which is the same thing as we're washing our hands for 20 seconds it's keeping the process keeps happening breaking down more and more fat molecules to wash those germs off our hands so here we know you're going to be washing your hands a lot in your family's beautiful new kitchen. And we sure do thank you for joining us today. In Newberry, Elena, thank you for letting your girls share this fun experiment with us today. We really appreciate it. Well, Patricia, perhaps other people would like to try some of these activities with their kids. How can we find out more about it? That's right, Amanda. In fact, many of our 4-H at home activities, like the one we did today, are on our website. If you go to clemson.edu and type in 4-H, you'll find a lots of resources. The best way to connect though, whether you're a teacher or a volunteer or a parent, and you wanna find out more about 4-H programming, both virtual and in person, is to contact your 4-H agent. Um, and that information is also on our website. You can click right on your county and it will pop up and you can find your 4-H agent and connect with them. They have amazing resources to share with you uh, in 4-H youth development. I echo that and hope that people will. Um, let's hope that maybe this unusual and unfortunate time is going to send a lot more kids um, into the world of 4-H because it's a wonderful, wonderful way to learn, make friends, and um Develop yourself in the very best possible way. Thanks you all so much, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.